red. Yeah, I don't have my glasses on. Is there a red light in the either. corner? <laughs> okay. I left my glasses at home. My husband said, should I bring them? I said, nah, I don't use them. It's okay. Hi, welcome to Professor Pearl. This is a episode where I'm with Shawnee from the Knitting Cup. Hey, welcome. everybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nicole. Welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting and other crafts. And I'm with Shawnee from The Knitting Cup. I'm in Texas. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. As soon as I walked in, the first thing I saw, obviously, was your amazing yarn. And then you walked out and you had this really cool top on and it just really, ah. like, you just looked so chic and modern, and I was like, I love your top, and then so you funny. said, I made it, and I was just so excited. So can you tell me about your top? It's it's a vote pattern, and I made it with um, curtain material. <laughs> You'll find that um, the, some of the best fabric is going to be in the upholstery section. Yeah, I so. was noticing it had a little boxy fit, and so mm -hmm. do you think upholstery material makes a good... I love upholstery oh, fabric. Oh, yeah. oh, fun. I think it has better, I don't know, has better hand to it. I like mm -hmm. it. You said it was a Vogue pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. do you find time at all to sew as a knitting store owner? <laughs> no, nope, and I even carry fabric. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on your website. You said, I was excited to see you had some linen because I recently mm -hmm. made my first linen top. Oh, and uh -huh. it's, it's become so popular to sew again, and I'm uh -huh. thrilled. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because of the pandemic and people are stuck at home and they're uh -huh. trying all their crafts and sewing is uh -huh. one, but it doesn't matter. I'm just glad they're doing it. I just have recently started sewing and I wanted to learn to sew so I had something to go with my handmade sweaters. Mm -hmm. I thought well, I made all this time to make a sweater. It would be nice to have a dress or a skirt that goes with the sweater I it? made. Andrea Mallory, mm -hmm. I think, does, sews quite uh -huh. a bit. Uh, I think Hoagie Locatelli uh -huh. does some sewing too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. So, can you tell me about your knitting journey, like how you learned to knit and so when I was seven, my babysitter, who's like I said, you know, she was probably maybe five or six years older than I was. It was just somebody to come and play with me. And she said, my aunt taught me to knit. I'm going to teach you to knit. So I've been dabbling in it since then. And in college, I knit quite a bit. Uh, not well, but I knit. So I had my skills <laughs> and um, about 35 years ago, I, I went into a yarn store and I told my husband, I'm going to have one of these. <laughs> and he said, well, you need to learn to knit. And I said, I already do. And he said, you should get a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so that was 35 years ago. So uh, when did the knitting cup start? Uh, well, about, hmm, I quit teaching probably 20 years ago. And I told them I really wanted to have a store. And at that time I was doing, uh, I was an herbalist. I uh, had food blogs and stuff like that. And I knew I wanted a retail store. And he said, you need to work retail. Because I had been a teacher for 17 years. Oh. And um, like it was a public school teacher. Uh -huh. what yeah, I teach? taught. Well, I had kindergarten through eighth grade. Oh. I taught uh, gifted students uh -huh. predominantly. The last eleven years, I taught gifted awesome. kids, so it was mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but he said, "You really need to work retail." So I worked at the Escape on the Square for about eight and a half years, and the store came up for sale. And I told him, I called my mom first, and I said, "The yarn store is for sale." She said, oh my gosh, honey, you gotta buy it. And I was crying so hard. I was so excited. I could almost not talk. And so then when my husband came home, I said, I bought the art store. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, honey. <laughs> so it all, it's all good. Oh, that's so funny. He said, well, good. <laughs> now, did you know right away you wanted to have the, the knitting and the tea together yes. because of your herbalist mm -hmm. background? And so did. how did you come up with the knitting cup? Well, mom and dad were cleaning the store and um, it just, we knew it had to have knitting in the title or yarn because if people are gonna Google, if you don't have that in your title, you're up creek. And so um, I was coming back and I thought, okay, knitting, 
tea cup tea cup knitting cup mm -hmm. and so it it worked and um i took a picture superimposed it on my window i did it all in chalk because it was poppy fest that weekend mm -hmm. so i needed to have my name up and that monday i went down to the county and i did my dba as a knitting cup i love it yeah love it. what is one of the greatest joys that you get out of being the owner of the knitting cup here um community mm -hmm. the you know when people put together their business plans mm -hmm. everything is business and if somebody were to look at my business plan if i've ever written one it has nothing to do with business mm -hmm. it has to do with creating a community and being kind and treating people the way you want to be treated and having amazing products for them and models and offering them a chance to sit down and learn something new without it costing a fortune then you've done your job and they they come and meet here now i used to have a table that would fit 12 people mm -hmm. and on any given day it would be full mm -hmm. that was before and the before times before. <laughs> and i'm sure it will get there again and and i'm happy mm -hmm. when it will i i you know shortened my table by half mm -hmm. uh, but we've installed other things and and that way people can sit a little bit further apart mm -hmm. and they're having a great time but they this is their home. Mm -hmm. We did a manifesto last week and I'm going to pick up the, the poster this week and I sent them an email out and I said, tell me what's the first thing you think of when you think of a knitting cup? And the words that came out were so awesome and not that much had to do with yarn, which made me feel even better. Oh, that's beautiful. So I know, I know we've done our job. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. What's something unique about the knitting cup? Um, well, you know, yarn store owners, we all buy our yarn from mm -hmm. all the same people. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us have access to maybe other countries and things that others don't. But as far as in our store, I believe it's the amount of models that people see. And whether it's toys or clothing or jewelry, I even, we have mm -hmm. knitted jewelry, crochet jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives them an idea of what that yarn can do for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Yeah, I noticed you had a really well curated selection of books. Mm -hmm. I was really excited to see some books that I've been eyeing like 52 weeks of shawls <laughs> and the new lining. It is, it is mm -hmm. it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, the um, I do, so Charlie is uh, a knitter that has since moved to Colorado, but I still love you, Charlie, for watching this. <laughs> Um, she would come in and she'd flop her knitting down and she'd say, all right, this is the next book you need. I can't find it anywhere. Somehow I can find books. <laughs> and so... Okay, you have the, <laughs> the modern daily knitting, like, mm -hmm. I'm really excited to look yeah, at those. Yeah, so. and so it, it, it's just been a big help. I keep my ears open for what customers want and mm -hmm. I go for it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me You're today welcome. and making time in your busy day because it's, it's, you know, you're busy today. <laughs> it's a Saturday. <laughs> so, well, I'm blessed. Yes. yes. <laughs> so thank you so much. You're for welcome. Me. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for being here. So I'm back in Oregon from visiting Texas. So you just watched my interview with Shawnee from the Knitting Cup, who's located in Georgetown, Texas. And I thought I'd just pop in a little clip here where I talk about my experience at the store and show you some of the things I purchased when I was there. So I had a really great time at the Knitting Cup. It is a yarn store that looks like it used to be a house. And so there's these rooms and all the rooms, I think there was four or five rooms and it felt like when you were walking through it like each like there was like a surprise almost it like around every corner and it was like there was lots of yarn there but it wasn't like sometimes I can feel overwhelmed like if there's just so much yarn in a room so it was like sectioned off really nicely for me um, when I walked in, 
there were lots of like kits and samples of different things hanging up and the first thing besides Shawnee and her really cool shirt that she sewed, the first thing that stood out to me was a wall that said made in Texas. And since I was on a vacation of sorts, I thought I would really like to pick up some yarn from Texas. And I actually like really haven't visited Texas too much in my life. Most of my, all of my trips to Texas have been other than this trip have all been work related where I had something work related to do. And so I've been to Texas, I've seen some things, but this is my first like not work related trip. And so I don't know, I just thought it would be fun to get something on the made in Texas shelf. But then I was like, I want to look around the whole store. And as I was going around the entire store, I just kept coming back to the made in Texas, like, almost like bookshelf. I'll have some video footage at the end that you can see it. And I, for this trip, I did pack carry-on exclusively and I had no desire to check a bag. So it was a quick weekend trip and yeah, I just wanted to, I was traveling by myself. And so I just, I wanted carry-on only. And so that limited what I was going to purchase. I knew I wasn't going to buy like, you know, a sweater's quantity of yarn on this trip because I had everything in a, a little bag. So I actually, when I went, I had intended on only purchasing like maybe one, one hank of yarn of, of a special yarn, but I ended up getting two off of the Made by Texas rack. And the first one I purchased, I don't know, it's so good. I would say right now, at least the way it looks in the camera to me, is this is pretty true to color. So it's like pinkies, peachies, some mauves, and then these really like cool flecks of kind of burgundy. And it's a new to me dyer, Moon Tower. And there's this little sticker that says Texas Made. And and actually the label itself says living and dying in Texas. And so this is a DK, a 100% super, super wash merino. So when I picked it up immediately, I looked at it and was like, I want to make a pair of DK weight socks. I have not done that yet. I've done worse weight socks and fingering weight socks, but like Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady, she has a really nice um, DK pattern for vanilla DK sock. But when I got home, I was like, I should have looked for something that had some nylon content in it. So because this is just 100% super wash, like I still could do socks with it but maybe they need to be like slipper socks or something. That's something I'm going to be wearing a lot, but I do just really like this. I had wanted to be socks, but maybe it'll just have to be something else. Like a hat, this would make a really good hat or fingerless mitts or something. Anyway, I just really, this really gave me all the fall vibes and well, I'll just show you. I'll go into it a little bit more, but I bought a bag and when I was, looking at this, I was just imagining this together and I was like, I'll talk more about the bag in a second, <laughs> but I just, I'm so excited about this and I really like this logo, this moon tower logo. It's just secrets in my heart. There's a hexagon and hexagon is one of my favorite polygons. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So I was only going to get that because that's so good. And I was carry on but I saw this and I was like, I have to get this. I have to. So like pink's my color. It's my thing, but also like very vibrant colors. I just really can't say no to. And this is coming up pretty true to color here. It's bright blue with some like little blips of white and then these like speckles of like 
fluorescent yellow and orange. It's so good. And then the name got me. It's called Surfer Girl. And I would call myself a wannabe surfer. Like, I've been surfing. I love the ocean. Um, yeah, I just, it's it called me. So 80%, this is the other thing. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. That is my, I end up knitting socks with 75, 25, and I do like it because it's often like for me, for some reason, that's a more readily available sock yarn. But what I actually like for socks is an 80, 20. It's like my favorite base. So I was super excited about this. Oh, did I mention it's called Savvy Skeins is the and this clever and then this is cleverly dyed yarn. It also has a made in Texas logo. Okay, so that was the yarn I bought. As I've hinted, I ended up buying a bag. I have to be honest, I had zero intentions of buying a bag. And I will zoom in and show you more about why I bought the bag. But basically, this year I was really tempted by some of the Halloween bags I was seeing on Instagram, like, ugh. And I talked myself out of buying them because I said to myself, you just would use this bag for a short amount of time. Like you're not gonna use a Halloween bag at Christmas or January and no judgment if you do. If you do, that's actually amazing, but I wouldn't use one. So I was like talking myself out of it. But uh, it was in the back of my head that I like these like very cute Halloween fabrics. And then I showed up and to the knitting cup and there's this cute fireplace and then hanging from the fireplace were some adorable bags. And there was this Halloween bag. Okay, uh, you're not gonna be able to see this in this video here, but it's glitter. Like this black pumpkin is glittery. The black pumpkin is glittery. Like what? And then there's pink and purpley pumpkins. So this, pumpkin here is like a cat and its ears and its nose are glittery and I just I could not say no I was like the handles are leather it's amazing now nowhere in here does it have a tag of who the sewist or who the maker is that made this so they are available at the knitting cup these bags and I was kind of torn because they had bags that had like just general things that would be nice to have like knitted sweaters, like just great like prints that are good for all year long. And these are such nice bags that I was like, I should probably buy one of those. But it's like the heart wants what the heart wants. And I just, so I have a Halloween bag and I've been using it since the day I purchased it. And I'm gonna just use it as much as possible in all this month of October and so I have my first Halloween bag. This is my first one and I'm so excited about it. <laughs> okay, so I bought the bag. So as I mentioned in the interview, Shawnee at the Name Cup has a really well curated collection of books and it was so hard to pick something I wanted to buy because I want so many books like she had 52 weeks of shawls which is definitely something I'm really interested in getting one day and modern daily knitting field guides and they were amazing but ultimately I ended up getting the new line a um I have some of the line a's already from some previous editions of them and it's just such a beautiful book and the photography is amazing. It's just like one of those things I just get a lot of joy out of looking at. And I was staying at my friend Brenda's house and that night I like curled up in bed and like just like had some alone time and looked through this late. And ultimately one of the reasons why I decided on this is because I knew that there were things in here I actually want to make as soon as possible. I'm a huge fan of the Hair Spill Daylights and Nightshades, and there's a sweater designed. It, there's this ink cardigan. 
designed in that yarn. And here's the cardigan. And so that's definitely on my list of like dreams. And then the cover, this, this cover sweater. There's just so much in this that I just love. And so I'm so grateful that I did choose to get this. So when I was, I knew I was gonna visit the Knitting Cup. Um, obviously I arranged an interview with Shawnee. And so I was on her website for a bit looking and I noticed she had a lot of Katrinkles and some of my other kind of favorite makers in terms of notions. And so I'll show you what I picked up from there. So oh, quite a while ago, it was before the pandemic, I went to the Oregon Lock and Fiber show and <laughs> I did not buy from this maker. It was called The Needle Runs Through It. I don't know if she was there or if they were just selling her things. And I always like, I left there like wishing I had bought some of her notions. And so Shawnee carries some of those meal runs through it notions. And these are Christmas stitch markers. And I love Christmas knitting. I've knitted a Christmas sweater. I'm knitting another Christmas sweater. And so I just, I was like, I want these. So there's like a little gingerbread friend. And then the gingerbread friend is wood. And then these are glittery. They're so cute. So I knew it. I was like, I have to get that. And then I think I've mentioned I'm a huge Pearl Smith fan. I have a, a Pearl Smith. And it was my first time seeing Pearl Smith like progress keepers. And so that's like one single progress keeper. And the price point on this was, I just want to say really amazing. It was $5 because it also included, and it also included stitch markers in the back. So that's incredible. And although I mentioned the price, it was like, I wanted to nab one up because it was so good. And then Shawnee actually donated this to the podcast. So that's going to be amazing. Um, so she also donated one of these to the podcast, which... I'm a huge fan of too, which is Katrinkles. And she, I don't know if you can see this, but this is very iridescent and it's, it comes together and makes a unicorn and one says right side, wrong side. So that's super cool. She donated this as well. And I'm, when I record my next episode, this will be the giveaway for that episode. So just head bunch from there still, if you like, can't wait. <laughs> and okay. Oh, she also gave me a little pin from the knitting cup. I'll show that right here. And it's super cute. It's her logo, but it matched the teal pumpkin. So I put that on the bag right away. Then my friend Brenda, she had to have one of these, apparently like was like waiting for Shawnee to get these in. And they are a wine koozie. So this says knit one, sip two. So my friend Brenda bought this for me and also one for my friend Eloise. And so super cute. And then the knitting cups in the back. And I did try this on my wine glass and my wine glass actually does fit in there. My sparkly wine glass fits in here quite well. And okay, so the last thing was Johnny gave me this, which is a, it's a nice canvas bag. I suppose you could put a pair of socks in here or you could use it for notions. And so it's a nice canvas, natural canvas with her colors, which are these like this kind of Tiffany blue color. And it says the knitting cup, fine, tea, fine yarns and tees on it. And just wanted to say, if you live in Georgetown, Texas, or like in that area, apparently there's a knitting crawl this coming weekend. So on Friday, October 8th, like that weekend, and so she had ordered things early so she'd have them in her store for the for the knitting crawl and so this is the giveaway for the knitting crawl so if you are going on this yarn crawl and you stop at her store and spend 75 dollars or more i think you get one of these and i don't know 
if you're gonna buy yarn anyway, it's nice sometimes. I think it's a really quality gift to give away. I think that's super, I think it's super cool. Um, so she gave me one of those and I felt really special. <laughs> so I ended up getting a lot more than I actually intended because I was carry on, but I was strategic with it because I bought the book that's thin so that fat, fit in my book bag quite nicely. And I only had two hanks of yarn, which I could store in the bag. And the bag rolled up really nicely because it's, it's like, it's definitely like a lined fabric where it's like fabric and then like canvas on the inside. So it's thick, but it also like can fold down nicely. So it, this also fit in my book bag really well. And then the other things were small. So I it was really strategic travel shopping and I was really proud of myself. So I will end this by saying thank you for watching and hopefully at the end I'll include some little video clips of the knitting cup and I hope you enjoy the first interview that I have on my channel here. Bye!